Mm, I have a really good feeling about today. Why? Because I'm going to show you guys how to color correct and edit your photos so that they are absolutely just popping off that screen. What up? Thank you guys for joining me for another video. Today I'm going to talk to you guys about how to edit and color correct your photos. Now for this video today, I'm going to be using the Camera Raw Editor in Adobe Photoshop. The thing about editing is it's totally subjective. There are a million different ways to do this, and there's not one right way to edit your photos or color correct your images. Different situations call for different types of editing, and every photographer kind of has their own unique look or style that they bring to the table. Personally, I like my photos to have a nice, vibrant, bold, colorful style without getting to the point where they don't look realistic or they don't look believable. So that's what I'm going to show you here today. All right, so I've got five photos picked out here and ready to go. I will talk you through all of those edits as I go. Then I'll come back to you guys at the end of this video. I'll leave you with a few general pointers that you can walk away with based on what you saw in the video. All right, you guys ready? Let's go. All right, so as you can see, I've got the five photos picked out here that I'm going to edit for you guys. So let's jump right into the first one here. Now keep in mind, these are all raw files. These are exactly how they look coming right out of the camera, right off the card and into the computer. So when I bring it down into Photoshop here, as you can see, it automatically brings up the camera raw editor. And on the right hand side here, you can see all of these slider tabs that you have at your disposal to use for your editing. And they're all pretty self-explanatory, but they all do a little bit of something different, but it's really fun to kind of play around with. Right here, we've got a photo of Xander Bogarts. Nice, clean bat on ball shot at Fenway Park. Good action shot. But as you can see, it's a little bit overexposed. The colors are kind of washed out. It was kind of like a bluish tint to the photo. It kind of blends in with all these fans. It's a bright, sunny day. It's hard to shoot the white jersey against all the reflections on the clothing and the fans in the background. So one really great way to make your subject stand out from the background is to use the clarity tool. And that's right here on the right. And one thing you gotta be careful about with clarity is it does sharpen your picture, but you don't wanna go overboard with it. As you can see, if I slide this all the way to 100, it really starts to look fake. It kind of makes the people look like they're like paper cutouts um, or really like overly textured. You don't wanna go that far. So my general rule is I don't go past 15, maybe usually more around 10. I don't really go past there. Now, he's kind of blown out, so I'm gonna bring the exposure down just a tiny bit, and I'm also gonna bring down the highlights just a little bit on those really hot white parts of his jersey. Now, same for the shadowy parts of his jersey. I'm gonna bring the shadows up a little bit and just bring out those details in his clothing just a tiny bit more. Now I'm gonna dehaze and add a little bit of vibrance to give the photo some overall color. And maybe I'll bring the exposure up just a tiny bit now that I've gotten this far. Now, as you can see, it still kind of has that like bluish overhue to it, that bluish tone. So right here is the temperature slider and that refers to your color temperature. So you can slide this all the way over to blue or all the way over to a more warmer tone. Now, I don't like to go too far with it. This is our original point right here. So I'm only gonna add a couple points of warm just to make it a little bit warmer. Now, one other thing to note about the people's clothing is that you can really pick up some nuances in the colors of the clothing. There are still some kind of blues and purples in here that you really wanna get rid of. So what you can do is you can go over to your HSL adjustments tool and in here, you can choose any color to selectively adjust the saturation of that color. So I'm gonna go straight to the blues and just bring back those blues just a tiny bit and also bring back those purples and magentas. And that is starting to look pretty good, pretty realistic of more what the scene looked like. So what I'm gonna do here is go to the before and after and you can really see the difference here. Just a nice, complete edit really brings that photo a little more life without really going too far on any of the edits. So then what I'm gonna do is just open the image. I'm gonna give this one little quick crop here. And the goal of this crop is to make the photo look a little bit more heroic, make the figure look just a little bit more larger than life by getting rid of some of that foreground dirt. All right, so I'll save that. And we've got our first one. 
All right, we're moving to our second photo here. So what we've got here is another good action photo. This is Dustin Pedroia and Grady Sizemore kind of having a collision at second base. Now this is straight out of camera during a night game. So I do feel like the colors are a little bit flat. They're a little bit dull. So what I'm gonna do first, and these are great tools to adjust your color saturation or your color vibrance, is use the dehaze tool right here and also the vibrance tool right here. Now these will just really make your colors just pop just a little bit more. I'm gonna bring up the exposure just a tiny bit, bring down the highlights on his jersey just a tiny bit and bring the shadows out just a little bit. I'm gonna bring the blacks down maybe a tiny bit more. Now, another beautiful thing about the raw editor in Photoshop is you can use what's called the adjustment brush. And basically what that is, if I click here, is I've got a brush and I can adjust the size of the brush, either larger or smaller. And what you can do is you can pinpoint an area on the photo, just a single area that you wanna adjust without having to adjust the rest of the photo. So let's say I wanna bring out those shadows in his eyes created by the hat he's wearing. So basically I can add my brush and just kind of brush right over that area there. Then I can go over to my exposure tool and I can really bump that up and bring out the detail in his eyes right there. Just gives that photo a little bit more of a storytelling element. So I love this feature for pinpointing one quick little spot that you wanna adjust without having to do the rest of the photo. Now finally, I'm gonna add a little bit of clarity. Like I said before, it's a good way to make them stand out. But one thing to keep in mind when you're shooting at a higher ISO, as you can see here, I am shooting at 1600 ISO. The higher your ISO, the more you use the clarity, the more grain your photo is gonna take on. Now, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more here. And you're really gonna see this grain start to come up the more I do the clarity. And see how grainy that starts to get right around here? That is something you don't want because the photo starts to fall apart. So remember what I said about the clarity. You really don't wanna take it too far past 15. I usually like to live somewhere within 10 or so. Now I'm going to zoom this back out and overall that's looking pretty good. Let's see the comparison. You can just see it just pops just a little bit more, gives you that really vibrant effect without kind of overdoing the edits. As you can see here, my edits are pretty low key. So I'm just going to open the image. We talk about cropping for impact. This is another situation where We've got all these kind of distracting elements. We've got dirt down here. We've got some crowd up here. We've got a number here. I really want to focus in on the action. So basically, I'm going to try and get this crop as clean as I possibly can just to the green area of the wall behind him. I don't want anything else to show, basically. And that looks pretty good. I'm going to adjust the horizon just a little bit to make sure it's straight. And there we've got a nice impactful photo. Okay, so as opposed to shooting in low light conditions where you have to push your ISO higher, this is an example of one that was shot in a beautiful sunny day with plenty of light and I was able to shoot at a very low ISO. Now with the low ISO, that means I've got all kind of range for these adjusters that I can work with without really ruining the quality of the file or letting the file fall apart. This is a tricky lighting situation where you've got a big range of shadows and highlights. And so for those situations, the highlights and shadows sliders right here are gonna be kind of like your best friend. So if you bring down the highlights, those are really gonna give you a little bit of definition in the sky up there. And then if you bring up the shadows a bit, it's just gonna bring out the shadows underneath the stadium just a little bit more in the depths of the stadium where those fans are sitting underneath the overpass. Now I'm gonna bring the blacks down to just make this pop a little bit more. And I'm also gonna bring the dehaze up again, just to make it pop a little bit more along with the vibrance. Now I still feel like it's just a little bit too bright. So I'm gonna bring down the exposure just a tiny bit. And also I feel like a little bit too on the magenta side. So I'm gonna bring in the greens just a tiny bit and maybe kick the, te the color temperature to the right, to the more warm side, just a tiny bit. Now I'm gonna go into my selective HSL adjustments and I'm gonna bring down the magentas. Again, I feel like on their uniforms, you're just getting a little bit of that pink nuance, which I wanna try and get rid of if I can, even some of the reds. Now, 
that looks pretty good. Let's see the side-by-side -side comparison. As you can see, just a lot more vibrant, just a lot bolder with some pretty minimal adjustments here. I think I went probably a little too deep on the highlights, so I'm gonna bring those back. Maybe a tiny bit too deep on the blacks. Now, I'm gonna give this a good crop to finish it off. This is a tricky one because you've got this post in the way on the upper left corner, so you can't do the full crop. It's a nice four by five crop and will really accentuate that sun flare coming down right on top of the players, kind of giving them that halo, that dreamy effect and really focusing in on the players. All right, so there we've got a nice looking finished edit. Save that. Okay, now I wanted to show you what you can do with photos on a portrait in a portrait scenario. So this is something that was not shot live. This was shot in studio with studio lighting. And at first glance, you know, it looks pretty good. But I wanted to show you with a few simple tweaks what you can do to kind of boost the whites and make the skin of the subject really kind of pop. I'm gonna pop this clarity just a little bit, give them a little bit of definition. I'm gonna bring the blacks down, bring the contrast up just a tiny bit. And although these whites look like pure white, I'm even gonna bring the exposure up just a little bit more to really make them white as white can possibly get, a nice crisp white look. I'm also gonna pop the shadows up just a tiny bit and that'll bring out some of the shadowy areas on his jersey, the wrinkles and whatnot. And as you can see, that's starting to get a little bit better. It'll give you a tiny bit of vibrance, tiny bit of saturation. And then I think what I'll do, as you can see right here, you've got a little bit of the blues in his uniform. So I'm gonna bring down the blues just a tiny bit right there. And as you can see, as we do the side-by-side -side comparison, you see how much more detail we have in his face, how much more of the facial structure you can see with these minor adjustments. Now look over here on the sliders. These do not stray far from the center at all, but it makes a world of difference as far as the edits you're doing. The general rule that I always tell people is you don't wanna to stray too far from the center of these editing tools. Imagine there's a straight line right down the center of these tools. The farther left and the farther right you go, the more you're gonna damage your file and the farther away from your original file you're gonna be. So I generally like to stay pretty much right down the center of these with some minor adjustments to the right or to the left. And that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna open this image, do a quick crop, nice vertical. I'll get rid of that bottom hand down below and also get rid of the seam and the ceiling up above so it's a nice clean background. Punch in just a tiny bit tighter. And there you've got a nice looking portrait of JD. All right, our fifth and final one. Now, this is basically one to just show you an example of a shot that is underexposed. So it's underexposed out of camera. It's shot too dark to begin with, but mistakes happen when you're out shooting. Things are happening really quickly. It's not always easy to get a perfectly exposed shot if the light is changing or things are moving really fast. So this is Zach Brown of Zach Brown Band during a concert at Fenway Park. And I just wanna show you how easy it is to adjust those mistakes. So again, starting with our clarity, I'm gonna make them pop out just a little bit. Now, as we mentioned, this is a dark photo. So exposure, we're gonna raise it up just a tiny bit. Now, as we raise the exposure, his skin starts to look pretty much perfect, but you lose some of that really nice, rich blue color in the sky up here. So to compensate for that, I'm gonna bring the highlights back down and you can see you start to retain some of those nice blues and the clouds and the definition in the sky. And then I'm gonna bring the blacks down just a tiny bit to kind of blur out that crowd a little bit more. I'm gonna dehaze just a tiny bit, bring the vibrance up a tiny bit and the temperature, I'm gonna warm it up just maybe a little bit. And I'll finally finish with a nice little vignette, just a tiny bit here. And again, as you can see, in the comparison. This looks so much better than before with just very, very minor tweaks as you can see on the right hand side. Remember that straight line just going right down the editing tools. Not really straying too far all the way to the left or too far all the way to the right on any of these. Just kind of straight down the center. Simple yet effective ways to make your photo really pop and stand out. So I'll just edit this. We'll do a nice 12 by eight crop here. Just punch in a little bit, 
really make him seem kind of larger than life and filling the frame. And center him off. And there you have it. Okay, so what are the general takeaways based on the edits that you saw here today? Number one, stay down the middle. The farther left or the farther right you go with your sliders, the more unrealistic your photo starts to look. Keep in mind that imaginary straight line right down the center of the editing tool. And if you stay relatively close to that line, your photos will be in great shape. Pay attention to the smaller details, things like the color hues and clothing, shadows on people's faces and the overall color temperature of the photo. Take advantage of those tools at your disposal, like the selective color saturation and the adjustment brush. Paying attention to the small details separates the great editing from the average editing. Finally, you guys are gonna like this one. Less is more. The more adjustments that you make to your image, the more the quality of the file is going to fall apart. Think of your photos like an ice cream sundae. You want just the right amount of toppings to enhance the flavor of the original ice cream, but you don't wanna to put too many toppings on that you lose the original flavor altogether. Think of your pictures in the exact same way. Screw the sundae. I'm just eat right out of the carton. Mm. But if you like what you saw here today, make sure you subscribe to this channel. Give this video a thumbs up and drop a comment down below. I wanna hear from you guys about your editing workflow, your editing techniques. You can also follow along right here on Instagram. I'm gonna be posting a lot more photos. But in the meantime, I'm absolutely going to town on this. And by the way, vanilla, strawberry, chocolate in that order, hot take.